Hi everyone, this is Real World Audio and this is about uh, chassis considerations for your uh, Darling Amplifier build and uh, you see this is the chassis that uh, we have been using for our Darling Amps that's the size uh, I have settled on when we made the chassis and the size is 14 inches by 18 inches deep and 4 inches tall so that in metric 30 centimeters by 30, 40 40 centimeters and 10 centimeters tall and I can tell you that you do not need this huge chassis for the Darling Amp you could do it in literal in half the size however that would limit you greatly uh, because one of the questions I, I received for this amplifier is something pretty important is will I be able to use the parts that we use in the amplifier if I want to upgrade my amp later on and my answer is right here in this video yes you will be able to use most of your parts provided you build a big enough chassis because in that big enough chassis you have room to improve your amp and it's uh, not just uh, improvements in a way that if you want to change some elements in it like you see here I changed the Darling tube to 807 tubes so uh, but the input stage is the same so the 6J4 driving not 1626 but 807 and um, I can still use the same uh, chassis most of the parts are still the same output transformer is the same uh, and uh, I have added here like a monster uh, power transformer that's uh, upgraded that's new uh, so basically when you will use your darling amp and you want to modify it in the future to use different tubes then uh, I would say the only big part that costs uh, big money is the power transformer that you will have to be changing that's going to change if you change uh, the tube complement in uh, your amplifier and, and some of you might want to do that if you want more power because with these uh, well I could technically get more power but for that I would have needed to upgrade the input stage as well to provide more I would say higher uh, voltage swing which I haven't done so even though technically these power tubes can uh, give me just one each gives as much power as a pair of the Darling tubes uh, and then even a little bit more but I still can't use more power than that so even though I have done all of these upgrades in this amp it's still uh, roughly a 1.5 watt per channel amplifier so why I am telling this because uh, many of us are thinking in the mainstream way mainstream audio way that to upgrade it means you need to have more watts well, you don't need to have more watts. Your true upgrade path is getting loudspeakers which are sensitive and which can match your uh, amplifier. And uh, for example, I'm showing here uh, these uh, AOs. And actually, these are not that sensitive. And it's a really tiny loudspeaker. It's only 91 dB efficient but it's a 16 ohm driver and there's no crossover so if you do not have a crossover in your loudspeaker that counts almost as if you were adding plus 3 or plus 4 to your dB rating and uh, as far as how the end result in sound quality will be when using a low power amplifier however uh, let me share with you my experience with darling amp upgrades because uh, i am going through a full circle now uh, and my other darling amp i have modified even more extremely and uh, i will show that later on and believe it or not 
it has even lower power than the original Double Darling had. So from 1.5 watts per channel, it can now supply 1.2 watts. Uh, but uh, I will show that later on. So right now I'm just telling you about the full circle is because I was going through the mainstream advices and doing what people do online and suggest that you keep on modifying your amplifier, you keep on changing the power tubes, you keep on doing this, doing that and modify it and, and after a while uh, you end up Actually, I have done probably on my uh, main Darling Amp because this is Charlie's Darling Amp. This is the second one, but my first one, I have done over 100 rebuilds on it. And uh, this big chassis size will allow you to go through that many rebuilds. But after 20 years of experience doing those rebuilds, it was totally unnecessary. And the only thing I should have done is just stay with the stock darling that I had and just upgrade the internal wiring, upgrade the parts quality and just focus on cabling and loudspeakers. That's it. You don't need to mess around with the amplifier in the future. For the parts quality, the complement I have suggested to you, your resistors are all set. You don't need to improve on it at all. I have not told you yet about the solder to use. Use highest quality solder that I've been recommending on my previous episodes. If you don't do that, then in the future that will be a major upgrade path to use proper solder for every connection. So... That's about it. Uh, this is the size that I recommend for everyone, 30 by 40 by 10 centimeters. This will be able to accommodate even the big output transformers that I recommend for the uh, upgrades. And, uh, and you will be very happy with it. There's another reason for choosing such a big chassis size and that's to distance out your power tube complement from the power supply. So my power supply inside is in the back of the unit. So there's where the power supply is and this is here the signal section. And that's absolutely uh, important to do that because it means that all the noise that it's inside the power supply section, it doesn't get into your signal section. So this is uh, just about as good as having a, a separate power supply in a different chassis. I found that really there's no further difference of, of taking your power supply and just making a cut here between the two and just separating them to different units because in that case you will need to have an extra long cable or umbilical cord connecting the two together and all the noise that you can potentially pick up through the umbilical and also the extra uh, signal lost through the extra length of the umbilical wire and the umbilical connectors that you connect uh, the chassis with, that loss is going to be greater than the benefit you gain with having different chassis for the signal section and power section. And um, this is my video today, and that's for your layout. I mean, not, the, we haven't seen the layout yet, but for the chassis selection, chassis sizing, and uh, potential future upgrades. So here, I do not have a front a face plate yet. Uh, as you, you have guessed, I'm, I'm, my primary focus is not always aesthetics. But, however, in this case it is because I want to make a very nice uh, faceplate for the amp. But right now, in this video, this is much more instrumental that you can show, you can see the guts inside. 
so this is how it looks like so those big bunnies there where's my finger that's the output transformer and uh, and here this is a well, I won't talk about that because it's going to make this video very long and I've been receiving complaints that I just break out into too many directions and videos are hard to follow. So now I'm just capping this video. Please like and subscribe and look out for the other parts of the single and the triode build series. Thank you for tuning in. Bye bye.